kan du høle en meg til meg som lå. Husk kan du høle en meg vil gå forbi. Da skal du være helt stille og fri. Hey guys, one second, all right, I think we're good, hopefully I put it in comments because that seems to work for everybody. Hey Mama Bear, hey Debbie. Hey Beth, hey Leslie, hey Brooke. Teresa's diligently sending out the links too. Let's see. Okay. Teresa, will you get the um the Facebook group? Do you mind? I got it. Thank you. Or I could do it if you need me to. Oh, I got it. Thank you. I'm going to have to turn that down. Hey, Samantha. Hey, Jangelor. Hey, Patricia. Yes, we're on Vanessa time, Patricia. Hi, wifey of twins. Don't you love Vanessa time? I do. That's why I put the ish after... The five, because that's important. Okay. I think I'm trying to remember if there's anyone else that asked me to do it and then I'm going to forget. Um, but I think that's pretty much it. Okay. Hey, searcher. Oh, searcher. <laughs> That's right. You already told me that. All right. I think that's everybody. All right. How are you guys doing? No, Teresa's not. Okay, so it looks like she's frozen. She, when she passes out the stupid link, it freezes her up. They're like, Teresa's frozen. Hey, Carrie J. I need to make like a really stupid face and then let it freeze. You should. Well, that I used should. to always happen to me when we, before we did like so our like, intro. You do like the NKI yeah. and, and then go. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that always happens. But now we fix that. Yeah. Hey, MJ. Hey, Grace. Yeah. That intro, dude, every time like I get, it gets stuck in my head. I'm like, dun, 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 dun. like I'm I like, I, I, I stuck. Well, I asked Christine what it says, but she was like, I don't know. Hey, this Christine. This sounds an early. It's so scary. I don't know. <laughs> I make up my own stuff. So. <laughs> it's kind of catchy. It's creepy. It's <laughs> Yeah. It's a creepy. Creepy. That's, that's what Christine said. She's like, I don't know. It's creepy. Hey, Emery. <sighs> hello. 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 Susie, I love this. It's me. It's me, Susie. 
<laughs> I know. <laughs> it's, me. it's me. It's me, Susie. Like, oh, right here. <laughs> Stupid YouTube. Um, these on. <laughs> yeah, you me that. I was just trying to hope we could, that everyone have time to get the link and get some more people in here. Um, okay. Good thing Christine's back because we all saw what it was like on Wednesday when I had to do, you know, more than two things at once. It was a, it was a craptastic mess. You're glad we like, it's me, Susie. That's so weird <laughs> that that even happened. <laughs> hey, mom, the bomb. Mom, the bomb. Oh, you know what? Before we go, we're still waiting for a few. I actually do need to send this to, let me turn my volume down. Um, I always have those people that, my the list is getting too long. They're like, can you text it to me? Because I can't grab it off. And then all of a sudden I'm texting um 50 people. So I'm going to do one. Okay. It doesn't even feel like Saturday. I didn't do anything fun today. All right, hold on. That's sent out. And then did you put it in the group, Teresa? I did. Cool. Thank you. Welcome. Hey Jeff. Hey Lynn. Hey, Queen Bee to you. Oh, I just texted it to you, too. Were you guys up late watching the tapes? I only watched the beginning, um, like the first, like where it was the, the newer stuff, because they replayed um, like the phone calls and stuff that had already been like an armchair and, um, you know, been around for a little bit. So I stopped watching after that. I did, too. I wasn't, um, hi, Debbie. Hey, Denise. Um, hey, Debbie. Yeah, I wasn't, um, you know, there was all this big push to watch it. And I think I got maybe 45. I, that might be even more than I actually did 45 minutes into it. And I was, um, I, I, I just clicked off of it. I didn't really see the point. You know what I mean? No, no I didn't really see the point of it either. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. Yeah, I really don't know why it was. They did a lot of hype, like it was going to be like a you know a big thing. I, I I felt like it was kind of intrusive a little bit. Um, it was. It's That's awkward. It it's awkward. I think for those of us that understand the timing of like you know when they were actually talking, you know the fact that. He, they didn't know any of the discovery yet. They only had heard his first confession. Mm -hmm. They thought he was on suicide watch. So, I mean, it's like they're doing a lot. Of, I don't know. It was, it's hard because they put something out two years after and it's like, that stuff's not even the way things are anymore. So then it puts all mm -hmm. this, like all these people are getting like really angry when they're watching it. And I'm like, dude, like this wasn't like yesterday. It Like this is two years ago. You have, you have to look at the context to know what it's, yeah, I felt scuzzy watching it too. I just didn't. There was nothing. I agree. And it's so bad because it's like, I, full disclosure, I'm gonna watch it because I want to know if there is anything. But then it's like when there's not anything, I then then you just feel like crap for doing it. So it's like this whole like twisted. I don't know. Oh, she anyway. does look pretty in blue. Teresa, everyone thinks you look pretty in blue. Yeah, thank you. I, is, I call these my winter clothes. I actually have sleeves on my shirt. Can you see them? Yes. I, I, my, I put on a pair of tennis shoes and a, a short sleeve shirt instead of a tank top and sandals. Because it's, <laughs> it's 71 degrees here right now. So. Oh, my gosh. I've got my winter attire out. Oh, my gosh. It's, it's actually cold here. I decided to wear a coat. Um, hey, Jeanette. So, no, I felt the same way. And you know what it was, you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of when we talked about on the other live, the Santa video. I had that same feeling watching that as the yeah. Santa video. Do you know what I mean? Yes. It's kind of cringy. Like you don't really, you're looking at something from the outside with like zero content. And it's such a weird, I don't know. Maybe yeah. it's this whole case and maybe it's just where we've gotten that, you know, as 
followers of this case it is it's become could be that yeah i think you say, did you say yesterday propaganda like that yeah. kind of feels like it's, yeah it is like a like let's just put out whatever whatever we can and then hope that something sticks to it i don't know it's just a weird so weird but yet i watched it so like i can't like i don't know it's, it's no a, i agree but that's been like like you said that's been the kind of this whole case we watch everything because we want every single detail right but then there's some stuff that just and and some of the stuff in this case in general just makes you feel ugh because that's why i had that weird post yesterday too or whatever i'm trying to see hey ally 79 um about the whole, you know, watch what you're told to look at, watch what you're told to, who you're told to hate this week. There's a lot of, I wish this was, I mean, it was simple, but it, this is like the most complicated, convoluted um, thing. And Very this, much so. Yeah, and the, those tapes felt like, I don't know, part of it. And then, I don't know. And then it was kind of weird because maybe I missed it, but to me, it seems like they were spliced. So why did they go through all this trouble to get them to air them and then splice them? Because it should have right. been an hour and a half, right? Each family member had a half hour. So what did they cut out and why cut it out? So then, okay. then it starts like a whole new train of thought process of what, what was the purpose? Why all the hype? Why splice it? And I, I don't, I don't get that. Mm hmm I agree. There was a ton of hype and it was uh, really weird because we'd already heard it before. All we're doing is looking at people. I know the whole thing was really weird. But yet I watched it once again. So here we are. <laughs> I know, right? No, DJ, don't worry about getting here on time. I what? really wanted, I want to find out something new. I don't want to, I don't want to find out about their private life. I, I mean, not, not Chris and Shanann different. I don't, I don't feel like I need to know all about, you know, Cindy, Ronnie, and Jamie's private life to understand Chris. Yes, his childhood, but not their private life. Like, not their, not the way that they're mourning the whole situation. I don't know. It's like such a weird, I don't even know how to explain it. Allie, I like calling people out when they're wrong. So I felt like I needed to watch the show. <laughs> This is true. I, I do like that also. I like you cannot when well, you can't say one way or the other, whether it was right or wrong, if you don't even know what was there. So then you're stuck in that. I won't watch it a second time either. It's the same no. as the phone calls. I listened to them the one time and I'll, I'll never listen to them again. No, same. I don't feel like they're it, it's it feels very intrusive. I agree. And we've. And we've I don't know. Is your volume up, Teresa? There's a little bit of feedback. Maybe now it's gone. Never mind. Maybe it wasn't you. Maybe it was somebody else. Um, the other, the person behind the curtain. Um, yeah, it's still up, I think, isn't it, Teresa? They're just yeah. it's not on YouTube. Oh, yeah. on YouTube. I've had to decline. FYI, if anybody is trying to post it in the Unmasking Chris Watts group, I am declining it because it's already there. Um, it's there via link and it's there via watch party. So, um, yeah, no, it's up. It's still up. And I'm, I probably have declined like 30 of them today. Wow. Is Teresa doing an NK impression today? I don't know if she's doing it today. Tired. Look at my face, man. Look at this. <laughs> okay. My eyes are like, like barely even opening. I'm like, I'll just lay down. Um, But yeah, is that how you guys felt as well? Cause I just, yeah, I think we all generally, we all kind of get this, sim, you know, the same vibes or similar vibes on these things. And we talked about that before after the Netflix with that video that we always bring up. And I think that we do on this too. It was just, it was kind of like, okay. And I'm sure someone somewhere had a point to that. I missed it though. I missed it too. Yeah. If anybody happens to pick it up, like from somewhere else, let us know. Cause I don't know what the point was. Yeah. Please, yeah, please tell us. That's so funny. I mean, is the is the purpose to just bring more attention? Is the purpose just to, was it the purpose to get more subs? Was the purpose to I don't know, right? Propaganda. I don't either. Um, sorry, I just want to make sure. Yeah, the your content page. <laughs> we could probably arrange to have a meme. Why did you say the no? 
like, or is it just my regular old food face? Just these chubby teeth. There's a lot to pick from. I'm not gonna lie. Dude, whatever. Whatever. It's so it's like making me blush. Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> so anyway, um, the show. So this is part of it, but. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting show. We got to have like a hodgepodge of things. We want to talk about the Wads tape first um, and kind of, oh, hey, Stephanie. In that kind of vein of, um, I don't know, getting all the facts, but setting things straight. Um, I think that that's been a pretty common theme, which is why I kind of went off in that weird post yesterday about it. Because and you have to remember, there's a lot that goes on that you can see. And there's so much that goes on behind the scenes. So sometimes if we do something weird, it might be because there's something going on behind the scenes and we've been fed up with it. Or we're just weird. Or yeah, or we're just weird and PMSing or something. I don't know. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's my excuse anyway. Um, but, uh, oh, their account isn't monetized. That's a good point, Mama Bear. So, yeah, this is going to be an interesting one. I love our faces. Both our faces are just like. Yeah, where was um, the part where Cindy said that? Well, they cut out half of Cindy's talking to him. I mean, you can tell because it was like only 15 minutes of it. So was the purpose that to make? I don't know. See, you're going to get, I don't know. I'm all up in my head about it. What was the damn purpose? It was very clickbaity. I agree. Bullshit. <laughs> Oh, shoot, I'm not supposed to say it. I can't cuss. That's okay. I mean, really, do you think we can get through this without it? Probably. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. I already I already screwed up, and we're only 16 minutes in. So, <sighs> there's many screw-ups to go. Great. <laughs> Stick around, guys. I have, total, I have total faith. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say, totally why don't you take it. over? I love it. I take a drink. She takes a puff. Yeah. She's like, ah. I know. We're all up in our heads. No, this today. Whole thing is the case is just really, I mean, it's just, it's so twisted. The whole thing is just like all kinds of twists and turns and different things. And I think we're going to get some answers. I want some answers. I do too. And Christine took her inhaler. <laughs> Christine always says that to me when I get really, really anxious and then I'll, I'll leave these messages. I'll do it to anybody, but I'll leave these messages and I'm like, cause I'm ADD anyway. I'm like, duh, 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 and I talk really fast and she's like, take your inhaler, take a breath. Let's take a breath. Yeah. So yeah. And keep all that right. in mind. We're all about, let's get down to business. So we're all about, um, like I said, you don't have to agree with us. You don't have to like the same people we like. You don't have to, it is like a spider web, Beth. You don't have to think the same things we do. You don't have to have the same opinions or theories. And we've been doing this for two years, you guys. Well, not for the new people, but, you know, they're they're learning real quick what this is like. And, you know, I, I don't know. We don't have to agree. We just ask that we all be respectful and, you know, that we don't, oh, I don't know, like threaten each other and go real life and all this stuff that's gone on this whole case, too is so messed up and I really don't understand why there has to be that whole aspect to it and why it has to get so nasty. I mean, I, I guess I do understand on some levels, but um, when people have agendas or whatever's going on, but it doesn't have to be like that. We can coexist and not have the same theories on what happened or not have the same theories on different people involved, not have the same theories. And there's a lot of great channels that talk about a lot of different theories. And we, you know, I have respect for I would say almost all of them, almost all of them. All of them. There's a handful that I, I don't, but I mean, for most part, I find it interesting. And we all watch each other, and we all like. I like to hear what they have to say versus what we have to say. So that's kind of how everybody just get along. <laughs> well, I just think everybody needs to be adults about it, and it's like every you can't take somebody else's theory personally against you like these, this is not our families like this is right. there there are people who are you know deeply impacted by that like we don't have to fight like i don't know I, so i mean if, and if you don't like other people stop talking to them if you don't mm -hmm. like other people stop watching them i don't it, it's like the weirdest thing to me i agree 
No, DJ, not our groups per se. Um, I mean, we've had a little bit of that um, with the, with some new people we've had to have recently. Yeah, we we've had to boot more, I think, than we normally do. But ever. than ever, <laughs> yeah, than I've ever booted. My shirt's all crooked, but I keep pulling the wrong side because I don't know the damn camera. Look, she's trying to get all. She's like, "Hello," um, but no, not really in our, <laughs> not really in our groups per se. But exactly, you can't argue your theory by name calling, and I usually find that that's the sign of a pretty weak argument. If that's if you're just going to go after me personally, which happened this morning. But my point is. Yeah, we, we just don't see that. And we've spoken out on that a few times and we, we always try to be careful and be try to take the middle road like we've talked about. But honestly, I feel like we've been tested a few times recently and it's not always going to be like that. And if people have a problem with that, that's fine, too. But it's not always going to be like that. And it can't always be like that. Um, sometimes you have to just kind of stick up for what's right and and then let Allie yell at them and tell them they're wrong. I think Allie has like a bunch of chairs lined up so that she could just be like, you sit down, you sit down, you sit down. Mm -hmm. You're wrong and you're wrong. <laughs> she did it again the other day in another group. So she was arguing with somebody and then she was like, I'm not going to argue with you because you're mm -hmm. wrong. <laughs> so, and then she just walks away and then they just keep going and she's like, yeah, whatever. I don't care. She always makes me laugh. She's always like so funny. But anyways, so I think everybody can agree that this case is atrocious. And that, that, that none of it ever, ever needed to happen. And right. I think if everybody can agree on the bottom line and trying to figure out why, I think we can work through and, and actually, you know, listen to other people's theories and listen to what other people have found that maybe we haven't, or maybe they've looked at different life experiences that bring them to that point of thinking mm -hmm. the way that they do. And I think we can do that respectively, respectively, respectively and respectively, actually, <laughs> just saying. But I do. I really think that you can. I just don't. I don't think that you go, You don't have to like somebody that I like. I mean, Vanessa, she's got all kinds of fans. And I'm like, like, why? don't talk to them. I don't like them. No, that's not true. Uh, but I mean, we don't like we don't all like the same people. But we that don't. doesn't mean we don't like each other. Like, who gives a shit? Grow the fudge up. And we argue within our own. Hey, Missy M. New I've, my Hi, Missy. Woman, she's sweet. One of the new VIPs. Um, VIPs. Yeah, you're gonna say that. So <laughs> don't act like you know me, right? Um, I think I need another drink because I keep losing my train of thought. Because then I started thinking about Allie and something funny she said yesterday, and then Missy said hi. It was like squirrel, squirrel, something shiny. What? Right. In the immortal words of Rodney King, can't we just all get along? She does need a meme too. Well. Well, Mama Bear needs a meme that just says, I'm not going to argue with you you're because wrong. you're wrong. Right. Well, we're going to talk to Christine about that. <laughs> She's, She's on it. it. She's got it. She don't even need to talk. She's, She's like, all right, got it. Got it. Done. Okay. So anyways, that's the, oh, <laughs> see, she keeps getting me off track. Oh, that one's perfect. Just because you're a moderator doesn't make you right. That's what the one lady told her. And she's all, that's correct. I'm right. Because you're wrong. Oh my God, that's perfect. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, all right, we're you 23 minutes. Me that's right. Okay, let's get into business. I can, I can ramble on about nothing forever, as you know. Um, yeah, we do this all day. We do this all day, actually. Oh, hey, Sam. Well, I adore you. I always miss you when you don't come. Sam's like one of our OGs. So, all right, we're oh, going to... Sam's house! Yeah, I know. Sam's going to... I'd do that for you. <laughs> So, okay, we're going to start with a statement that we were asked to read um, on the live. Teresa is going to read that because I can't read and drink and type at the same time. <laughs> I can't read and drink. <laughs> I only have... Time is hard. So my... I'm going to read it. Time is hard. Okay. <laughs> and my skill set only goes so far. Um, All right. Let me pull it up so I can read it. I'm going to go off. I'm going to go off camera, but my mic's still going to be on. Okay. And I'm also texting. Is Christina uh, got her? I don't know. Christine, are you? We wanted to show you also why and what prompted us to, you know, agree to put this statement on. Um, and we're going to pull that up for you momentarily. Here we go. So we've been nice enough to this 
wonderful specimen of the human race to uh, blur out her face and her name for yeah. th these purposes. She's a peach. But this. You guys like how fast I got that up? <laughs> you did. You're super fast and efficient. Um, thank you. And so uh, this is what, you know, we're going to read a statement from Anna. And you guys all know who Anna is. Um, this is what she got this morning. Now, keep in mind that she gets these um, every day. And she's gotten these every day, especially since it was the day before the Netflix thing came out. It was the 29th. So it's been almost a month now that she's got these almost daily. Um, and just like anybody, it wears on you and it starts to break you down. And in this whole social media world, nobody really cares. Nobody cares. Um, and I don't expect, honestly, I don't expect this person to care because if you're able to write this, you're not going to be one of these people we're talking to and you're not going to care. This is who this girl is. So this message is to Anna. Hey, Barbara. And she was um, upset this morning. We've already kind of spoken out on some of this stuff, but she gets these all day, every day, and um, has tried to get help with some certain aspects of it. And it just keeps up, keeps up, keeps up. So this one um, is just an example. It's the one that she got this morning, but um, she asked us for a favor and wrote a statement that she wanted us to read because one of the funny things are not funny is a lot of these that are coming to her are based on completely false information. So what's worse than having this is that what the people are saying to her, what they think isn't even true. So anyways, sorry, Teresa, I had to go off on my little oh, tangent. You're good. I'm, I'm just waiting for you. Okay. I'm going to read it. All right. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, due to the recent false presentation on social media and various tabloids, I, Anna Nowak, need to put an end to the rumors. Chris Watts and I did share a close friendship for a period of time in which I became a very close confidant of his. But at this time, our friendship and the religious journey with Chris has come to an end. I no longer have any communication with Chris Watts, his family or his contacts. All threats and harassment directed at me or my family are unwarranted, unnecessary, and will not be responded to. All threats against mine and my family's life will be directed to the police department. Love, Anna. I added the love, Anna part. Hi, Patty. So, there you go. And I'm sure that, you know, people will want to say what they want to say, but this isn't just for Anna. These are This is for all of the people that get these daily in this case the people that do have something to do with it the people that have are related to the people that are in the case the people that just like this actually have people saying false things which is prompting and throwing you know fuel on the fire which certain people love to do so here you go that this person you know and this happens all day like i said and it's not even based on truth so there you have it from anna's own mouth what the situation is, you know, what's going on. And I, I really hope, you know, I know there's always going to be scumbags. Thank you, Christine. But I really hope that this will help because this has got to stop. It's, it's so bad. And it does, these are real people and it does break them down and it affects them emotionally, mentally, and they get scared and they don't know what to do. So we're not ever going to turn anyone down when they reach out to us scared like this morning. Uh, yeah, I don't think it I, I don't think it matters whether you agree or like anybody. I think that you cannot it, you cannot ever condone the 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 hatred uh, and the the messages and the harassment of anybody. There's plenty of people online that I don't like. I've never reached out to them to tell them how much I don't like them. I've never reached out to their family members to tell them how much I don't like them. I, mm -hmm. I'm it's that it's not normal and it's, it's just, it's very strange. And I think that, I, I think that there, these type of platforms, you guys, you have a responsibility to not put out a bunch of crap. That's just going to constantly get people harassed like that. I don't think that's the, I don't think it's okay. And mm -hmm. people can say, well, I'm just a YouTuber so I can do whatever, you know, like, what do they, what do people expect? Well, I, I expect that human beings have morals and ethics and that you do the right thing and that you don't set people up 
to be harassed and 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 given death threats to whether you like the person or not it's gross and it, it, it should be illegal i totally agree and here's the other thing is who is worse the people that send these or the people that throw gas on the fire and push the agenda to do that because a lot of these people there's a lot of unstable people in the world right so you if you are the one that's going out there and saying these things right and saying that things are true when you know they're not true i i mean i feel like you're just as responsible as the people sending the messages out to people i mean why are you you know fanning flames are you are you hoping she has a mental breakdown are you hoping she gets hurt where what is your i think they are i can't even wrap my mind around that thought process i really can't I have no answer for you because I can't either. Yeah. I don't know if it will stop anything, Barbara, but I think that it needs to be, it needs to be clear that, I mean, at least from, from her, that she doesn't even talk to the guy anymore. So like these people are like saying like, how could you do this? Or how could you do that? Or you're going to die. You should, you know, whatever. She doesn't even talk to the guy anymore. Right. So it's like, at all. Oh, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, you're, it's all past tense. So you're going to say something past you should have died. I mean, like, I don't get it. Well, I, agree I, I, you, I don't Barbara. get it in real life at all anyway. I don't either, but I agree with you, Barbara. And I, and that's why I started out when I said it's probably won't change anything. But at the same time, I, I'm not going to, I mean, I was tempted to just put a video together and put all of these people on blast and just start doing that. I, we were nice to take her um, picture down and stuff, but I mean, I can start doing that. I think it, it's criminal. And I think these people, if, if you're so, you know, brave to go into somebody's, to go into someone's box, um, you should be prepared to be, you should be prepared to be called out. <laughs> but seriously, you should be prepared. Get in people's boxes and not expect for some backlash. Exactly. Nope. We will expose what you put in the box. So that's, but seriously, and I'm, I, I know we're softies, both Teresa and I are softies. So, you know, when we see stuff like that, we get really, really worked up if you can't tell. And we've actually, you know, been looking at these now for what, two weeks every day. Yep. Enough. All right. You know, enough. And that's just my two cents, but I don't know if it helps anything. I sure hope it does, but we don't know. So sorry to have to bring it down, but what I, think is I won't, I won't, I won't fuel the fire of telling people it's the right thing to do, but I would, I will fan the flame and say it is the wrong thing to do. Like, I'm going to say, no, stop doing it. Yeah. And uh, thanks, Sam. And think about it if you're in that position. And again, like Teresa said, it doesn't matter how you feel about that particular person, but she, you know, people, anybody, not just her is going to start to feel like everyone feels that way, that they can't even, you know, show their face. They start to get paranoid. It's just, the whole thing is just messed up. And we thought we would, um, she wanted to do that. And so we did that for her. So I don't know, maybe we helped, maybe not. Maybe we didn't. I don't know, but I'll, I'll do my best. I always stand on the side of right. And I, I think that I think that them harassing people involved in this case on a personal level and calling them or messaging them. And I don't know if you guys caught that. Anybody who was like for watching the tapes last night, you know, there was a there was a phone number that was shared. And immediately on that live um, on the actual live, not in our group, people mm -hmm. were writing out that phone number and telling everybody else to start calling and harassing them. Yeah. Like what? Like. I don't get that. These are adults. That's what kills me. I mean, there's just some serious instability out there. And so let's not, let's not encourage it. It's just my opinion. I mean, I don't know. It's just not the way that my mind works. That's gross, Allie. Oh my God. I can't even say the words that I think that that is. Somebody will probably report the channel. That's unbelievable. How do you sleep at night? Because you go on, because you're on YouTube talking about a, uh, a public case, but yet, yet there's people who feel like it's okay to go into somebody's personal 
inbox and tell them that they're going to die and that they should be in oil tanks. And we're, I mean, it's weird. She's like, chicks are crazy. And it's both. And, and I mean, I'm sure that's scary too, because she gets them from men and women on the regular. And you don't know who's just saying it. You don't know who is a fake profile and you don't know who is real. <laughs> I like that, Susie. Oh, thank you, Grace. No, there's not. And that's why I said, I mean, I don't care. You can like whoever you want to like. I, nobody cares. Nobody cares if you like her. You can say you don't like her. You can say whatever. Just nobody needs to be harassing and sending death threats and telling other people to to push that agenda. It's just. I agree. I agree. Sorry. Just and that's what I have to say about that. And that's what she has to say about that. Okay. So sorry, but we felt, you know, this was, that was also like a last minute decision. So, um, but yeah, we thought we would do that and hopefully we didn't make it. I don't think it's going to make anything worse because either we did say something or we didn't, it happens every day. So there's that. Yeah, I agree, Carrie. But if it gets to maybe some people or they understand the magnitude, maybe they'll give more pushback to the people who do encourage it. I don't know. I don't have the answers. Exactly, Barbara. You can like someone and not wish them dead. I do it every day. <laughs> so. No, it's like a grown up thing. It's kind of weird. It is weird. You can actually, you can even not agree with someone and like them and not, you know, cuss them out and dox them and all that stuff. Right. So. Hey, Angie. This is so true. They should probably be calling a psychologist. Very true. Else. If you are that I, triggered by a public case, get off the internet. I say that all the time. People, you can see people losing it. You're like, then get out of the groups, get off of social media. You are not okay enough for social media. <laughs> you're not okay. You're not, no. you're not okay you're to not be okay here enough. engaging in this group. No. No. I agree, Missy. Right. And it's like, so we just perpetuate hate. I don't want to, I don't want to perpetuate hate. Mom, the bomb, you knew that was going to happen with the phone number. Yeah. No, they didn't care to. I was actually surprised. And then we'll get to the next thing. But when we were looking through the discovery tapes, um, all of those little tapes they have with just the people's information i'd be i'd be mad they could have eaten like they're like the one minute two minute little clips of like yeah literally just right. the people's information that they yeah. put out there and then people are asking like this isn't going to get out is it and they're like oh no. i know like, talk to rourke talk to rourke no it's not going to go anywhere no he'll take it like, out yeah it is because i'm listening to it right now no he's going to redact a bunch of nk crap but he's not going to redact your home address date of birth and no. phone number no because that makes sense yeah exactly missy Okay. Well, thank you guys for listening to that. I just thought that was important. We'll get and off our pedestal now. Yeah. Get off our horse. We don't always get on pedestals, I feel uh, like. But so sometimes they're worse. Just normal, normal freaking people, dude. We're just normal people living our life, talking to our, our peeps about true crime. That's like... Exactly. That's it. I don't think it's... Uh, being in our little Patreon over here isn't hurting anybody. Exactly. Plus, me and Teresa are all sensitive. We're feelers, so. Dude, I was like all up in my feelings yesterday. I can't even. I can't even. I can't even tell you. Yeah. Like I was like, man, I'm not even like PMSing or anything. What am I doing right now? Like I'm like all emotional, and I'm not even an emotional like person really. But God, I was like, no, that's my. Get out of your feelings. I'm I like, best I need to talk to you. Right? Like well, roles are reversed. I'm the one that's all emotional. Going to Teresa, like she's like, chill out, okay. Um. Thank you. Uh, okay. So thanks. Let me get a little drink to, you know, cleanse my palate before our next phase. We're of not show. done yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's not the end of the show. I know you guys are like, well, that was fun. I'm glad that I cleared my Saturday for that. No. All right. Hold on. No, that's, not it. that's not it. All right. Just give me one minute. We're going to kind of switch around here, but we do have a guest that's coming on really quick. So, Jason, I'm sure this is redundant, but who is the channel? 
what do you mean? Who's I don't know who is who is the channel. This mm-hmm. channel is Vanessa's Unmasked, or the cha- the the your content. Is that what you mean? Or do I you mean know. the channel? There's not a particular. Oh, this is just the people that are uh, writing Anna. It's um, it's a bunch of people, like from I don't know where the heck they're coming from out under their rocks. I don't I don't know where they're coming from, but it's people from all over. And it really hasn't stopped. And you'll see it in the groups and stuff. We, When we see it in ours, we get rid of it. But, yeah. But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. <laughs> and I'm going to sidetrack. Okay, hold on. I can't. Hell no, I can't do more than I was. All right, hold on. Okay. So let me just rearrange her really quick. <laughs> um, and we'll be right back. We're going to get our guest on. Just hang on one second. <laughs> Hey, Sherilyn. Hi, Sherilyn. Welcome. Can you hear us? Okay. She's muted. She's muted. She can hear us. We can't hear her. Okay. There There you are. You can hear me now? Yes. Yeah, I can hear you. How are you? Good. Good. And for those of you just tuning in, we have author Sherilyn Cadel on. Of course, she's got a new book coming out, a new Watts Murders book coming out soon. Um, we'll ask exactly when, but we don't we don't know. But we're so glad that you would come on the show and talk to us a little bit about it, whatever you can tell us. Thank you so much for having me. Um, can I just start out um, real quick with a, a little something before we go any further? Um, yeah, of I course. Want to say, you know, with the first book, uh, what happened with the copyright issue, which was not as it, well, I'm not making any excuses. I'm very sorry. I ask for people to forgive me. Um, it was uh, not done intentionally or with malice. And I'm very sorry for that. Um, all of that has been taken care of. It's past but I didn't want it to be an elephant in the room for us tonight. So um, let's move forward. And I hope that you will forgive me and give me a second chance. Well, thank you. And I, I we appreciate you being here. And um, I don't know. I Oh, Debbie, they're all saying hi to you in chat. Oh, hi. I think <laughs> the are going to run those really quick. Um, here we go. And so, well, it, I mean, we're very excited to talk to you too, because of course we, we all know the timing. I mean, of course, I'm sure you've seen the, you know, Netflix oh, yeah. special that <laughs> came out and there's a whole new wave of a lot, a lot of people completely obsessed with the Watts case now. Well, so, you're about to be a lot more obsessed because I learned something from a very, very reliable source just before I came on. Oh, Christopher Watts is. Wait, did she freeze? Did she really freeze right before we heard? <laughs> Am I froze? No, you didn't. It's like Christopher Watts and it froze. I was like, <laughs> oh no. Can you see my face okay? Yes. Not yeah. that you want to, but I feel like I'm cut off at the top of my head. Um, 
Christopher Watts is pleading not guilty and that he was coerced into pleading guilty. And so I am told N.K. is running around like crazy, lorrying lor, up, can't even say it, getting attorneys. And it's going to be a huge, huge thing coming up. Now, that's what I was told right before this. So um, it's going to be wow. very interesting. If there's so we did hear this. yesterday, we did hear yesterday from another channel that he had met with an attorney. Um, mm -hmm. It's gone back and forth on it, whether, whether he actually could have or not. One, because of COVID. Right. Um, could he actually meet with anybody? But two, um, so the, the coercion, I, I know that um, that was one of the things that that channel had stated at that time. But I have one big question about this, and now I feel like I'm going to probably get um, contacted by the FBI or something, but... <laughs> no forced him into writing those letters to me where he very specifically talks about not only planning it but carrying it out plus all the other things that he's told me uh i, I find it mind-boggling i i really do I, I think that's one of the one of the main comments that i've seen across facebook about this is that um how can he be coerced in which in which one was he coerced when he's confessed multiple times he confessed to them he confessed um in february again he's confessed in letters to you um and I, I know that you know armchair detective had read letters from you know from somebody else that he'd also confessed in mm -hmm. so i mean it's there's a lot of uh, the coercion is going to be an interesting uh piece if that's what he wants to go with because i'm not really sure which piece he's going to say coerced into exactly right exactly i i don't know and is he going to throw nk under the bus finally is he going to kind of come out finally and and say if there is more on her than what he's been willing to tell us well and just to to make sure for anyone who didn't hear about the the video yesterday that Teresa was referring to and to just make sure this is all clarified. Um, so he, there was a video that said that um, he had spoken with a lawyer. And then of course there's been the rumblings of the 35 C, but he does have the five life sentences. And um, mm -hmm. so, yeah, so there's that, but there is, there was the video about him talking to a lawyer. So I don't really know, or if anyone knows, you know, what's going on, but it would be interesting with what I heard as well about uh, NK and um, the, the lawyer situation. You would have to wonder from her standpoint, does she watch all this? And if she does, like, you know, how does she feel when she hears stuff like he meets with a lawyer or when she yeah. hears, you know, cause it's hard to sort out what's true or not, but um, it would, I would, I have always wondered what, yeah. how she reacts to that. If, well, I think you know. she's scared. I would think from what I've just heard, but I don't know. It's, it's interesting. And I, I, um, yeah, which version do we believe now? You know, right. Well, <laughs> yeah, we know. do. That is yeah. very true. But um, anyway, if, if you find out more, let me know. Cause I'm really curious now as to what's going to go on with this and, Shanann's poor family. I I can't even imagine um, what they must be going through with this. Yeah, it's so sad. I think that so um, yeah, we're we're all very interested to see what's going to go on because it's all very confusing right now, and it's so hard to sort out what's rumors, what people are putting out for different reasons. I did see that video yesterday. I was a little taken aback, and I, I thought, well, mm -hmm. this is interesting. We'll have to watch what. I don't know the details of that though. Like I said, yeah. I was really busy yesterday and I, I thought it, but I didn't really get to do any follow up on it. But so with the new book that's coming out, do you have all of the letters in that book? I do. Um, well, I say all, I actually have two shorter letter, not in the book. And um, I cannot put those in the book, but I can later talk about it. Talk about them. Yeah. Okay. So um, 
but yes, all the letters are in the book. All the important letters are in the book. You can see his writing. Um, you can see his confession and um, certainly no one forced <laughs> him into doing it. So uh, yeah, so I hope they enjoy that. I mean, that's something that, you know, handwriting uh, analysis can be done on some of them and, and, you know, we can get opinions from what people think about that. And um, just seeing how a murderer writes uh, he's very um, forthcoming, but yet at the same time, um, he's very narcissistic, uh, all about himself. So, and that's one of the other things that I always find really, really interesting. And I, I don't know how. And, and again, anything that we ask you that you can't talk about, like we said, just let us know. But sitting down with him, there haven't been a lot of people outside of family that have sat down with him, looked in his eyes. Mm while I mean, we've all watched the confessions, but to sit in his presence across from him and see, you know, how he tells it, his emotions and stuff. That's, I like this, that psychology part of it too. Um, I'm always interested to hear how that was. Well, um, and I have to be able to take a deep breath here because I have, as of a recent, been very emotional over some of this. Um, sitting down with Christopher, I had never sat down with a murderer before. I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. Nobody warned me. I, I knew nothing about what to expect of him. But I was, it was just like somebody raised all the hair all the way up my back and all the way up my neck when I'm sitting there talking to him and his eyes turn black. And I kid you not, they turned black. And he just had this weird expression on his face as he talked about it but he talked about it so matter of fact just like no big deal and mm -hmm. and, and he wants you to listen to his story he loves telling his story he loves telling you all about it but he wants you to somehow not be affected but st and to think that he is just this really nice guy that just got sucked into something by satan that would have never happened to him had he not um, been affected by Satan or by NK and her group and her following and, and that type of thing. So, hmm. um, wow. I yeah, couldn't imagine. Been... I, I couldn't imagine sitting, I couldn't imagine sitting across the table from him or any, and like anybody like that. I know that there's a lot of people who are like, I could do it. And I'm like, I couldn't, I don't think I could. Yeah. I never would have thought I could. And, and my whole family was just like totally blown away that I did it. And I remember the day walking up to the, the prison the first time. And I'm like, what am I doing? Have I lost my mind? I, I, I mean, I'm such a city girl, somebody that has been sheltered and lived in a bubble my whole life. And then all of a sudden now I'm in this world. And I mean, I love true crime. I've always enjoyed true crime and you know, going through everything that you can find, you read about it, looking at the pictures and all of this. But this case really goes beyond, as we know, our average case. I mean, it's worse mm -hmm. than the Bundy stories or the Stephen Avery story or, you know, any of those. Um, so many people are attached to this story. I agree. I think that's one of the big things that it's the collateral damage to it. The, her the horror of what happened. Yes. It's hard enough to process. And then we've seen the collateral damage of all of those in his circle, his family, his the the friend, the everybody, their families, those people's friends. I mean, the just effect it's had on so many other people's lives. It has. And I think that that everybody everybody that knew him literally said like, this was not the person that you were going to think. And I know like we see that like on documentaries and stuff when the neighbors are like, Oh, that's the last person you would have thought of or whatever. Mm -hmm. But his closest and dearest friends didn't think so. His family didn't think so. Like, right. I, I think I, we've talked about this on other lives, Sherilyn, that like one of the things that drew us all in was it was, it was a normal family, normal middle-class family that is, you know, has, you know, a beautiful you know, be two beautiful children, a beautiful home, a beautiful life. And, and from one day it goes from that to the next day, this, and I don't and know how to wrap your head around something like that. You don't. And the thing of it is, is there has to be a breakdown somewhere years ago 
uh, for Christopher, uh, a sociopath or a, a psychopath, they don't just wake up one day and all of a sudden become that. It's lived in them. It has, it had to live in him, whether he allowed anyone else to see it or know it or not. Um, you know, you, you think to yourself, you know, you would know if your child was uh, capable of anything like that. Well, I don't know. Would we? <laughs> I mean, I a, person a lot has of, a lot of mothers that have written, yeah, a lot of mothers that have written books about their children, or you know, and the things that their children have done. They did not see it. They did not see it coming. They did not have any. You know, of course, there are the few and far between that are like, well, I thought that he was kind of off. I, mean, I thought there was a little yeah. bit of an issue, but yeah. most, no, it's not something that you expect that's going to be your child or your brother or your, you know, your sister. That's not. And I don't think we live our lives going, I wonder if that person's going to be the next one to take out his family. Right, right. It comes out of nowhere usually. But even, you know, through mass shooters and people like that, mm -hmm. when, when they start really coming forward with things and talking about that person, then little things kind of sneak out with, you know, well, you know, he was odd. He did this or he was bullied or who knows. I mean, I don't know what Christopher's problem is. The first time that I talked with him uh, on the phone. I thought, wow, he's really nice. You know, how uh, this is strange. And then you sit down with him and he starts telling you what happened. And you see this look on his face and his eyes go black. You realize, wow, there's something really wrong here. There's something very mm -hmm. wrong. A normal person does not do that. A healthy person that has a healthy mind does not do that. So... I don't know. I, 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 don't I, have to, I have to ask one question because one thing that like when we listen to his, even the February interview or you watch his sentencing hearing you, and even uh, now with the Netflix, I mean, they enhanced the audio and the video of him co actually confessing. He does seem to have, some have said it's fake. Some have said it's real. I mean, it kind of depends on their perception. He does have like an emotional, like he doesn't want to talk about it. He does. He, he kind of gets real tight. He starts to kind of tear up. The, you know, Rourke makes the statement in sentencing that he's literally crying because he's here, not because of what he did. Did you see any emotion like that when you were sitting across the table from him? Was there any part where he was like, I don't know if I can put this out there? No, no. He was happy to tell me the story. He, he won't. I think what you might have seen the day that he was with the FBI in February is the fact that he was surprised by them and it made him angry mm -hmm. that he, he, he told me it made him angry that they just surprised him and they wanted him to just, you know, tell them all this stuff. So um, no emotions are something that Christopher does not have. He, he just doesn't have them. I've never seen anything quite like it. When I was writing the book, um, I had to say to him, Christopher, you know, out of all these letters that you've sent me, you've never once said, I'm sorry. You've never said you're sorry to the girls, to Shanann, to your parents, to her parents. And I said, people are going to catch that right away. And he's like, oh, well, then I'll send you a letter that says that I'm sorry. And you add it on to one of the other letters just in the book. Just go ahead and write it onto the other letters. Wow. Like, wow. That is so, you know, that's about how emotionally he got. Now, I'm not saying that today he doesn't regret what he did, but does he regret it more because he's living his life and in this prison or because he misses his daughters and his wife? Um, yeah. He could tell me in one moment that he missed Shanann and the very next moment tell me that he was still in love with NK. So I find that very kind that's of interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. Um, and I have questions on that that too. I wanted to open it up to, I know we've got Patreon members who are dying to ask questions. So if you guys have any questions for Sherilyn, now would be a wonderful time to ask. Them. Can, I, can I ask one more question before we, before we let them take over the questions? Yes, Teresa. Sorry. Oh, um, there, there, there's an interesting um, story about NK that I was wondering if you would be able to share about about how he um, had introduced her. Oh, yeah, I don't think very many people know this. Oh, um, yeah. He told me that 
he now he didn't tell me how he met her or exactly when, but he told me that in 2017, on July 4th, at a fireworks um, festival or gathering that they had, that she came up to him, oh, hi, and all this, and he introduced Shanann to her, which I just, I said, but Christopher, that is so wrong. I said, because NK knew her competition. Shanann never had the chance to know hers. And, but, I don't and now I don't know if they were seeing each other at that time. He introduced her to Shanann as a co-worker. And unless they Which saw mixed up, she wasn't working there at that time. NK wasn't working at uh in a dark. No, no, she wasn't. She wasn't working there until April of 2018. So that's okay. Yeah, you've got so I'm, did he happen to say what the what the Fourth of July thing was like was it like a firework show or it was, was a firework it, show? Yeah, it was a they firework show. Okay, because I was wondering if it was like a barbecue, you know, like Fourth of July get together with like coworkers or if it was. No, it was a city, like a city thing, you know, a big fireworks. Thing. Okay. Yeah. Could you say which city? <laughs> was you know it what? North Glen or was it the Erie? Was it which which one? You know what? I let me look back in my letters. Okay. Because it seems like he did say the town that they were in because he said they would go every year. And uh, they were in Colorado. <clears throat> Excuse okay. me. So I let me I have to look back and see if he does say the, the name of the town. Okay. That would be interesting. Yeah, yeah very interesting. Yeah. Um hmm. I mean, it may have been harmless doesn't sound like it to me but maybe maybe it was even harmless on his side and not hers i don't know or maybe yeah maybe at that time there was nothing except for co-worker Possibly. but but he, they did know or you know maybe not co-worker but mm -hmm. somebody uh you know in the oil industry i probably yeah. would refer to somebody like that maybe as a co-worker if they had done right. any yeah yeah. Um, yeah, I, he, went, he went with the Thayers on July 4th, 2018 to the Thornton um, Recreational Center. Oh, Excuse me? thank you, Natasha. Thank you. Uh, oh, sorry, the question. I'm sorry, okay. Sherilyn. That was my fault. Okay. I should have read the question. Somebody asked where he met, where he went with the Thayers on July 4th. And, yeah. um, for 2018, he went to the Thornton Recreational Center, according to the Thayers. Oh, okay. So this would have been 2017. That's why I was wondering if it was. It was like a work barbecue or if it was like a, you know, a work thing. Because one thing I actually did find. No, it was a city find, thing. A city thought, thing. It was a city thing. Okay. All right. Now I know people have questions. What, um, what time frame? Uh, oh, I, had, I had a question about the time frame of something that maybe you know. Anyway, go ahead. I forget what I was going to ask. Well, I was saying about the time frame when you start when she started working there. Any time frame you want, we probably have your answer. But um, yeah, she started working there April of 2018, and then the time frame when she started doing the searches was August that's what 2017. I was ask you. So that's very interesting. You've got yeah, it was exactly one month after when you're saying. Oh wow. Okay. August of 2017 is when she searched Janan. Wow. She searched okay. Chris, actually. She searched Chris then, in August. She searched him first. Oh, okay. I didn't and even then, know that, Steve. So many of the things that I know, I've gotten from him. him. I, I went over the discovery and other things, and I've listened to all kinds of stuff. But, you know, some things stick and some things don't. Oh, Sherilyn, um, I go back through discovery, and I learn something new every time. I know. Yep, well, there's absolutely. so much of it, you know. <laughs> Yep. And, um, and then, yeah. And then hers was September 1st. So, and then there was more in, in there, but that is interesting. The timing, having it be 30 days before is, is very interesting. Um, yeah, that really is interesting. That's mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Christine, I think Patty Arthur had a good question and I don't remember where it was, but it was something about his eyes turning black. I thought that, Oh, here, here we go. Patty wants to know what exactly do you mean by his eyes were black, that she's been across the table from some awful people, but she's never seen the eyes go black. Can, she wants you to elaborate, if you can, on what you mean by that. Well, you know, when you're seeing, looking at a person, often we look at their eyes, right? So first it was like the pupils just went black, and I'm looking at him, and I'm seeing it go black and black, and then literally the whites of his eyes filled in. Maybe a better word for the whites of his eyes would maybe dark gray, but it was very dark. 
uh, the the darkness on his expression and on his demeanor was very prominent. I mean, you could see it. It, it, it. If I had not been with other people around me, it would have scared me really bad. I would not want to have been with him. Hmm. Um, that's interesting because I think there was something said, I, I can't remember, and I don't want to misspeak, uh, maybe Sandy on 2020, I can't remember who had a similar statement too about on the porch interview. Yes. She didn't said, she? she said that did not look, it was not, it didn't look anything like him. It was a totally, like a totally different person that they watched on his porch interview. Mm -hmm. I think it was 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they said, well, what did you think of his interview? And she said, I told him not to do it. And they said, well, what do you think of the fact that he did it? She said, I thank God every day that he did. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting because on the porch that day, he portrayed himself as like a bodybuilder, a big, you know, muscular, good looking guy with his smile and almost a laughter. And the first time I saw him, uh, the first thing that struck my mind was, wow, he looks like a little boy, kind of. He he doesn't look anything like he looked on the porch, you know, that day. Mm -hmm. Oh, but you saw him in person? Mm -hmm. the, the first time I saw him in person. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, I thought it was really different how, how different he looked. But he had been through a lot. You know, I saw him when he was only like a month and a half from Colorado. Mm -hmm. And he was terrorized, terrorized there. They Those people... That was brutal for him, um, you know, and, and, and listening to him talk about that, you, you could see. Now, see, those are the areas where if you're going to say anything is emotional, when he would talk about himself and what he went through in Colorado, he didn't cry, but that's where he would become the most. And even that wasn't emotional, but that's where upset maybe is a, a better word for it. It really upset him the way that they treated him in Colorado. He would have never lasted had he stayed in Colorado. Well, Shanann, Shanann's friends and, and her friend's husbands actually worked where he was being held. Oh, wow. So I know that a couple of them had to be like rotated out because mm -hmm. they were there with him. Wow. Yeah. So Carrie J wants to know, she says, I'm curious is, oops, can you go back to that one, Christine? Sorry. I'm curious, is Sherilyn ever felt that Chris Watts was trying to manipulate her if, you know, he was, yeah, if she felt manipulated by him? That's a, that's a good question. You know, I did. And the thing of it is, is, I didn't in the beginning and I didn't, well, I didn't until I started realizing after the fact that the book was written and he got angry uh, with me because of, I didn't. Um, pass some things to him first. Now, he did not ask me not to put some of that stuff that was in the book in. As you can read his letters, he very, at one point he even states, I don't know if you want this in the book, but so he, he knew it was going in the book. But um, a couple of times he became angry with me over different things. It wasn't just the book. It was a couple of different things because I would question him um, about stuff. And um but when I was at the Dr. Oz show, uh, I uh, was brought into a room that they wanted me to meet with a girl, and her name is Melissa Moore, and her father was the happy face killer. Yes, and he was. was. Yeah. I know exactly who she is. And uh, she wanted to talk to me because, um, I'm sorry? Oh, no, she said she knew exactly who Melissa Moore was, yeah. Oh, okay. She wanted to talk to me because she wanted to warn me of something that she had noticed. And uh, that was that very fact that she felt that he was trying to manipulate me. And she saw the same manipulation out of other people um, in his family uh, through things that she had watched. So she told me the whole story about her father. And she said, what's interesting is you can take every killer like this that has annihilated their family or they've killed people um and they all have that characteristic in them they're proud of themselves they like to manipulate you they think they can control your mind they can control how you 
speak your mind after what you've listened to them from. She said her dad was that way so much. And she noticed it in Christopher and she wanted to tell me. And so I thought that was really interesting. So after that, I realized mm -hmm. I was being manipulated. I was being, he was trying to kind of tell me how to do this. You know, I mean, I was new at it. Yeah. Um, but I knew that what I wanted to do was I wanted to tell the truth and I wanted to tell it as he told me. I didn't want to. I, I have so many notes and notebooks and things that I have written, jotted things down when I was on the phone with him. I couldn't take anything into the prison with me. Um, so as soon as I came out, I grabbed my uh, laptop and I just listed stuff that I could remember. And I, I still wonder to this day, what did I forget? Because there was so much. Uh, the first day I spent five hours with him. That's a wow. long time to sit and talk to someone about stuff like this. And yeah. then try to remember what you talked about the beginning of the five hours. Right. Yeah. I um, mean, in the beginning, other than a very quick small talk, talk, he was ready to tell me what had happened. It's like he needed to. I, at the time, I'm thinking he needs to get his off his chest. There are people that are in jail. They a lot of times will give their crime up because they can't keep their mouth shut. Mm -hmm. I'm sure right. you've heard that before. You know, they'll tell their their. Um, you know, their, their cellmate, you know, what ha what they did. And that's kind of how I felt. I had to get it off of his chest. Mm -hmm. That I don't think that's really the case. I think he just likes talking. I was about... going yeah. to ask you that. Like, did you, like, do you think that this was his, like, confessional or, and, but now I can, I see what you're saying. So at that point you thought it was his confessional and now you're looking back and thinking, did, do, do you think that he told you the truth? At the time, I did think it was the truth, but what every time I would bring up N.K., he would talk about her with me, but when I would ask him certain questions, he would, you know, take a step back and say, well, there's some things I will take to my death. And I felt like coming out of there the very first day, I felt like he was covering for her. Mm -hmm. What? I mean, I, I can only guess. I mean, I have you know, after spending time with him and on the phone so much and so many letters, I, I have my opinions of what he, of what happened, but I don't know that for sure. Um, oh, I, yeah. I mean, I at this point, you know, you know more from his mouth, but I mean, is there any way to actually know if he said the truth at that right. time? So it's really, it is, it's the same as did he say the truth during the February confession? Did he say the truth, you know, in the, in the confessions to you or in the letters? You know what I mean? Like, you, it's right. so hard to tell. Is it all just little saying pieces? Saying that he's not guilty at all. Right. I mean, wow, wouldn't that be something if we find out that he's not the one who did it? <laughs> I mean, that's about how bizarre this I, case is. But would right. he really take the hit for her? Does Did he really I love her that much? I mean... She certainly threw him under the bus. I, I don't know. Yep. I mean, I believe he did it. I have, in my mind, I believe he killed all three of them, all four of them, counting the baby. I don't think they had the wrong person. I agree. At all. Yeah. I, I, here's the thing is, I, abs I actually I agree, but if it came out that there was something else to the story and could factually be backed up, I wouldn't, I would not push against it because I would think, well, yeah, I believe that too. So, I mean, like, I do believe he did it all, but I also think that there's more, there's more to the story. And I think that's why none of us let it go. Right. Yeah. And, you know, he needs to be really careful. He wants this um, appeal and he wants to plead not guilty. That puts him um, in line for the death penalty. So he could go through all this and then be put to death. And, mm. you know, his, uh, family has made statements that, oh, there hasn't been anyone killed in Colorado for, you know, years and years and years. years. That doesn't mean that's not going to happen, you know? Right. Um, Under the governor that they currently have, it's not, it's the same as California where I live. It's Scott Peterson's, right. you know, going through his whole death penalty thing right now, which it's, right. there, there is, there, there is a death penalty, but nobody's dying. Right. So sitting on I, death I row. see that. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So there's a couple random, so there's a part, I don't know if, if he would have mentioned this or not, there's a part in discovery that is weird. It's a one of, as we know, his Google searches are very interesting and he has a Google search for volcanoes randomly in the middle of when he says he's planning um, the murders. Did he ever mention anything about the volcanoes or the Google searches to you? 
he mentioned not about the volcano. He did not mention to me. He did mention his searches about crystal. And then, you know, uh, the DA had mentioned that he was searching for jewelry. Right. And he said he was not searching for jewelry. It was a crystal, a certain crystal that NK wanted. And he wanted to be able to buy it for her. So he was searching um, crystals to, to see if he could find, um, you know, that crystal by her, which, you know, in my opinion, again, but this woman, very strange in the way that she did things. I mean, she believes in crystals will help you get places. She would talk to her grandmother through a crystal. Um, very odd stuff. But then he also said that she was bipolar. So. Right. And that's when we, or not, you know. Yeah, we talked about those tapes. Um, that's interesting because Melissa is asking here, which kind of. So. Did Chris ever demonstrate anger when he was talking to you? And because Melissa's asking, you know, did he ever show anger towards you? And if so, how did he kind of demonstrate that towards you? Uh, no, he didn't show me yeah. anger. He uh, was upset with me a couple of times, very, very briefly over a couple of things. We talked about it. He was fine. No, I mean, he doesn't seem easily upset. He, he seems now. He also told me, though, that with Shanann, he would hold things in. She would yell, be yelling at him about something. And he said he would just smile inside because he had other thoughts that were going on that she didn't know. And uh, mm -hmm. so that was pretty, that's scary. <laughs> you know, because I've wondered since then, has he ever thought about killing me? <laughs> you know? Uh, uh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, and then... Uh, I think there was a, did he talk about, I know there's a lot of people, there, there's different channels that have different theories on different things. And I think Leslie had a question up about, did he ever talk about um, his coworkers or did he ever talk about Troy um, knowing NK or any of those types of things? Or did he just talk about NK and then that was about it? Or did he ever bring other people from discovery into it? He uh, only brought Jim into it a couple. He, he said there was one evening that she had uh, several friends over. But uh, other than that, he didn't say their name. The only person's name that he said was Jim. And um, he, he didn't seem to care much for him. I think mm -hmm. uh, there were some, uh, I, I don't know how far I should go with what I say here. Um, it's in my book and I don't want to use that as a, oh, okay. my book because the answer is going to be in there. But okay. there, there are some things in there about uh, Jim and Nicole and uh, Christopher that he had told me. Um, but they're more sexual things. It, you know, that's hmm. more of what that is. So Interesting. Okay, so we're going to have more Jim stuff, more NK stuff in that in the letters and in your conversations, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, Mom the Bomb asks, after speaking to Chris, the letters and all that you've learned, do you feel that NK was involved and in so how and if so, how deeply, especially after what you've learned about her today lawyering up? I think well, we've been careful with the way we answered this question. I'm just gonna put that out there really quick. Okay. Um, he did tell me that I'm sorry, did I interrupt you? No, no, no. I was just saying, okay. you be careful with our wording, but go ahead. Um, he did tell me that N.K. told him that she wanted him to prove to her that he really loved her. Now, um, what does that mean? I mean, what did he feel was proof? We don't know. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know if she put that into his head. My belief is that some of the stuff that happened was put into Christopher's head because he did not think the way that some people I think would agree with me that he did not think along the lines of doing some of the things that he did. And I'm not talking necessarily about you know the murders. Um, right. 
in my book, I do get more into um, the oxy. And that's all I want to say about that right now. Um, because I know that opens up a whole nother thing. Um, but I want to be very careful and I, I don't want to put blame where it's not due, but there are other people involved in some of this. I can tell you that this was not all from beginning to end Christopher's idea. It just wasn't. So you made that statement like that, like she wanted him to prove um, like how much he loved her. And it brings me to something I've thought of before is on Shanann's Facebook, there's a, there's some posts that are very, he takes very literal and she, she comments that stuff Good. like about how the, the, I can't even remember what kind of meat it was now, why my brain is not working. Um, but take out the pork roast, pork loin, something like that. And then he takes it out and he stacks them like on top of each other. And she said, you know, to take them out. Yeah. There's a couple of things that like, she says that he just, he's so literal at what, yeah, she asked him to do. And yes. that just that makes me think like, you know, prove to me like, you know, big gesture, prove, mm -hmm. prove it. And I, I don't I wonder if there was any type of interpretation of anything that was said like that. Well, you know, uh, when I first met him and I even asked his mother about this several times, um, I thought he had Asperger's. Which, you know, is a form in the spectrum of. Um, autism. Oh, I, autism. Is it, is thank it, you. I'm not. I'm yeah. not overly familiar with either one, but I have heard both referenced when it comes to him. Yes, and I asked him if he would be tested for that, and he wanted to be tested for it. He said he had never been tested for anything like that, but when it came right down to it, um, he was afraid to go through it. That testing. I don't know why. I don't know why he thought that they would find out. But it was always like I could tell there were some things he just wasn't saying. He just wasn't telling. But I do know that um, we have um, a man here in, in the town that I live. He is a, a DJ at the radio station here in town. And he has Asperger's. And I, I'm telling you from day one, Christopher reminded me of him. And really? I still wonder. And, and there, in a, a person with Asperger's, I, I have a, a nephew who is, uh, he's going to be 40. He has Asperger's and they are so simple. They, but they have to be told every move to make. Like he cannot, for instance, he cannot just go and let the water out of uh, a sink of water out, like just to pull the plug. He has to be told exactly how to do it. And not that all of them are exactly the same, but um, it does ring very true of being told every move to make. Christopher could not have done this without somebody putting something in his head. Hmm. So this is a big one that we've talked about on our channel. And I know you've probably seen we do the we have a series on this, too. But. Uh, Patricia wants to know, did he ever say anything about NK knowing about the pregnancy? She knew about the pregnancy. Well, I mean, that's what I think too. Yes, she did. Oh, she definitely did. But I don't know that he told her. No, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. It's in the letter he wrote me. He told her about the pregnancy. And that no. letter is going to be in the book too? It is, but you know what? I got to back up. He didn't tell about their pregnancy. He told her they had been trying. Mm -hmm. She found out about the um, pregnancy through Facebook. That's what he told me. She found out through Facebook. He didn't tell her. That's what I figured. I mean, there was only 15 public posts in about three days, so... <laughs> Was there? Yep. Right. Yeah. And so we always thought that that was, yeah. And we knew there was the Google searches. So I find that, that really interesting. Um, and he said she got so upset with him. Um, I haven't watched all of uh, Shanann's um, videos. I've watched some, but he said there's a videos of where she really brags on him being such a wonderful person and a wonderful father and how much she loves him. And those were, some of those were posted during the time that he was already seeing her, seeing it in K. And he said it made her very angry when she 
would see that kind of stuff. So she was watching, she was following Shanann on social media and, and, you know, her videos and everything. She was, she was doing a lot of searching, I think more than what we know. Um, yeah. That's kind of what we've talked about with when she had that weird, I don't know if you know about this, but when uh, she went over there and, um, or sorry, he went over there and they did the whole condom research, the weird condom <laughs> research. Yeah. That makes more sense with knowing about the pregnancy than seeing someone for a few days and then researching a box of condoms it makes absolutely no sense yeah. at all. Yeah. yeah. To find out what date they were made. Right. Yeah. 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 Come on. Yeah. It's very strange. <laughs> it was very strange. But we know um, she had a few strange habits. So. <laughs> yes. Um, so that leads us to actually the next question, which is uh, Jesse wants to know how premeditated the murders were. If you talked about that and also what dark stuff went on in NK's apartment? Mm -hmm. Twofold. Well, um, you see stuff. I'm sorry. The first part of that question again. First part was the um, how premeditated. If he talked to you about the premeditation. Yeah, it was very premeditated. It was premeditated, premeditated for weeks and weeks and weeks. He told me that he daydreamed at times about killing Shanann. I think the planning of the girls came uh, the last couple of weeks before, and he told me that he felt like the girls were so innocent. And this is in the book. It's in a letter that he wrote um, that he feels like the girls were so innocent that their innocent spirits could feel the evilness in him and that he was planning on killing him because when he got to north carolina for that little vacation that they took uh, that at the beach he said the girls would hardly have anything to do with him they wouldn't hold his hand and play in the water with him hardly they and especially bella he said didn't want anything to do with him so mm -hmm. he felt like it was their spirits or their souls that them that he was planning on murdering them. Uh, I don't know if that makes any sense to anyone. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that was what he told me. And that's in that's in a letter that he wrote me. Wow. And uh then the second part of that was what dark stuff went on in NK's apartment. Well some of it I don't know. I know there was a lot. There was a lot of sexual stuff. There was some um, threesome. There was um you know the anal sex that was her idea, according to him. Um, there was the drink that he gave her. And I've been told um, that since then that he has denied this drink. But I'm not the only person he told it to. So I know that um, it was either just something he was trying to brag about or it happened because he definitely told me. Um, it's a drink she gave him, correct? Yes, it was a yeah. drink that she would mix okay. up for him. Mm -hmm. So do you think that those were considered dark things because they were out of his realm of normalcy? Because, I mean, yeah, for some people, uh, there's, there's a lot of people that are going to say, like, that's not very dark. It's just, a, mm -hmm. you know. Well, he tells me she was dark. She tells me she okay. was, he tells me she was dark and that he feels like the darkness that was in her is what possessed him. Hmm. Um, <laughs> he'll turn around and say how much he loves her. So I don't know. It, you know, it, it's just so bizarre. It's so bizarre. And, and, you know, well, speaking of that whole thing, Teresa has, and we can get into this later because I hope we'll have more discussions, but just a really interesting theory about something, but, um, Searcher is asking, did Chris discuss that camping trip on um, July 28th and 29th? And did he ask her to marry him? Or did he? do, do you know any more about the camping trip than what we already do? Uh, you mean the naked camping trip? That would be one of the things, yes. That would be it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, um, and there, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, they were naked on the camping trip. Well, that makes sense because they had the Google search for the um, the new camping spots. So yeah, yeah. I mean, sense. I think they were pretty much out in the middle of 
nowhere that no one was really going to see them, but I do know that they pretty much spent the whole time naked. Uh, she just, you know, controlled his head with the sexual stuff. But um, he did tell me about one instance where she disappeared for like an hour and she was gone. And I remember that. Um, he said that he was asking, you know, why she did that. Cause he said it was not unusual for her to kind of disappear for a little bit for a few minutes and stuff. And of course she might've been using the bathroom, but maybe That's not. What we were. <laughs> but anyway, uh, she would hold a crystal up and I believe he told me it was a pink crystal that she would hold up into the air with both arms and stretch it up over her head. And she would, talk to her her dead grandmother and so a lot of that different stuff went on where she kind of almost worshipped um, maybe try to teach him how to kind of you know give these crystals so much credit um, I don't know that's and but that's about it I mean it's I think most people know most of the things that he's told me about right um, the camping trip Right. Okay. And did he ever talk to you or is this in the book where we learn more about Lazy Dog? The, the Saturday before the murders when they went out to Lazy Dog and he said that he wished he could go back and, you know, that he didn't go. Did he talk to you about that at all? He did. He said that uh, he feels like during this whole process that God gave him three chances to um, get away from NK and get away from what was in him. And that was one of them. His friend, um, and I believe it was the babysitter's father, asked him to go to a game with him that night. Mm -hmm. And he told him he had plans. He couldn't go. He said that was one chance. That was uh, one of his chances that he felt God gave him to pull back from it. And he didn't. You know, of course, we know that he went with her anyway. And then... Um, he said one of the, it was that night, I believe, that he said when they went back to her apartment that he realized that she was afraid that she was losing her grip on him. Hmm. And she, that's when he said she talked a lot about, uh, again, that she wanted to give him a, a child, a boy. Um, but that wasn't the first time she had mentioned that. So that's pretty much that he's told me, you know, I kind of feel like there's more to that night and like, the, uh, the night that he was on the phone so long with her to me, there was more to it than what he's saying. It wasn't for 111 minutes. It wasn't just chit chat. It wasn't phone sex. There was more that was happening there. I yeah. believe this is only my belief. <laughs> uh, I don't know, but, um, I believe that as well. Um, and I think it's very convenient. We've talked about this a lot, but I think that it's very convenient that, you know, um, they can, she can remember all these details and they remember all these random details, but they don't remember a 111 minute phone call the night oh. before the murders. It's absolutely. He remembers that. Exactly. Yes. I find that ridiculous. Yes, um, it is ridiculous. So here, well, I'm going to ask you, get Denise's question while I plug back in, but, um, Denise wants to know, did he say anything about NK's bipolar video that Chris mentioned um, in the February visit? He just said she was bipolar. She was making, um, or she was using some sort of medications for her bipolar condition. Mm -hmm. She had come out of an abusive relationship, which he felt had made her bipolar worse. Um, and then uh, he would just told me that, you know, she was having her mail sent to her, her father's house because she was kind of hiding from this person. But it almost, the way he explained it, almost sounded a little more paranoid than anything. Um, but he didn't go like deep into that. No, he didn't. Hmm. That's always been interesting to us. Um, so do you guys have any questions? I don't, again, I, you know, we, she agreed to talk about certain things. I mean, I know a lot of some of the things that she does not want to put out there because they are going to be in the book. So, um, but anything she can answer. Okay. Missy says, did, Oh, 
Can you go back to that one, Christine? Oh, never mind. Don't go back to that one. You go to the next one. Just kidding. Um, oh, yeah. And I was actually going to ask that. Do you have a release date or is it kind of tentative? It's tentative right now because uh, what happened is uh, my publisher, they were coming along really well with it. It was in editing. You know, when you edit things the correct way, the way this book is being edited, it goes back and forth between you and the editors a few times. Well, then their office ended up having COVID and it went through almost everyone in the office and they practically had to shut down for a few weeks. So uh, because of that, the book is behind two to three weeks, they told me, uh, but it will still be out either the end of November or uh, sometime the beginning part of December. So okay. definitely, definitely this year. And they have put it on high priority because of uh, the Netflix. And there seems to be such an interest now of people, new people, people that don't know much about the case. And, you know, and I've had people say to me, why would you write another book about him? And why did you have this in the book? And why did you have that in the book? Everybody knows yeah. that. The thing is, not everybody does know it. There's a lot of people that don't know much about this case. And so even though I want the people who know about the case to read it, hopefully there's some answers in this book that they don't know. But there's a lot of people, there's millions of people out there that have never heard about this case before. So you have to kind of explain the whole thing for those people to understand I mean, as much as you can explain the whole thing for them to understand the crime, kind of like, uh, you know, ID, when you watch that, they go through the first uh, 20 minutes of just telling you about the person and what led up to it. So um, I just wanted to say that because I don't want people to think that, you know, I just you know, regurgitate all the same stuff because it's, that's not the way it is. I can give um, your Patreon group a, a little hint of something if you want me to. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's very sad, and I don't, uh, I don't want to say the whole thing right now. Um, but you're going to be a little surprised about something that Christopher has told me. And now, before you say, don't, why didn't you put it in the first book? Number one, I told him I wouldn't. Number two, it was in one of my notebooks that I had jotted down a bunch of notes and I came across them like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. I can't believe I, I forgot to put this in. I find allegiance to him that I should have to do what he asked me to do about this. And, um, but you're going to be a little surprised about what kind of came down the morning of the murders at the oil batteries. And um, um, I'll leave it at that. It, it's very sad. And it's uh, and it's his words, not mine. So. Um, so there is going to be more. You're saying that there's details about that whole aspect that we have not possibly, you know, heard yet or he hasn't said yet. Is that or maybe. I yeah, know. I mean, there may be people who, who have wondered or if they thought about it or whatever. But this is a more detail than that. And. Um, also, uh, as he was leaving, you know, the that survey uh, that morning, and Nicole um, texted him that Metallica song. If you haven't looked that up, it's called Batteries. And if you haven't looked that up, please do and read the lyrics to that. And then you tell me if she knew what was getting ready to happen. Hmm. I will. And I, I haven't looked at them in a long, long time. So I was just saying that the other day that I want to look those back up again, because that is interesting. I remember looking them up, but I don't really remember enough about what they said. Um, so definitely that yeah. this is maybe don't feel, maybe. don't kill the family is one of the right. lines that over and over in that song. Wow. Which, which is very interesting to me. Chance. I couldn't right. put all the lyrics in. in the book. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. No coincidence, I don't think. Another thing that I, I, don't, I don't know if any of you remember this in my book, and just the little thing I'll share with you, it's just kind of a, another odd thing. Christopher told me that the morning of the 14th, let's see. 
the morning, I think it was morning of the 14th, might have been the 15th, I'm sorry. There was a um, unwarned, or they didn't warn them that a storm was coming. It was like a quick storm, high winds come tearing through. And um, he said when the storm was over, there were three garbage cans from other neighbors' houses laying in his front yard. And he said he thought to himself, wow, a can for each body. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So. Wow. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah, it, my mind's all over the place right now. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just, you know, I'll just trace. We were actually talking about this. Was it yesterday, Teresa? We were talking about some of the stuff about the battery lyrics. We were talking about some of this exact stuff. So I definitely want to go back and look at that stuff. And then, and then it's interesting because I think one of the things is, yeah, we've talked about this for two years, but at the same time, everybody wants every detail because it's, it's possibly another piece of the puzzle. Correct. And that's what this whole thing has been. And some of the stuff you know you find is true, some is not, and then but it's but it's all pieces of the puzzle, and that's what all of us yes. are still doing here. And one of these days, someone's going to pick up that piece that's been missing. Yep. And find I it. think so. Uh, is there noise in the background of my house? <laughs> Yes, I think it, I was like, it's not mine. Um, that's okay. It might it's be here. Maybe, it's your, maybe it's your pup. It is. Oh, it's your dog. <laughs> He's got this little um, ball that is uh, it's supposed to help their mind, you know, with um, like teaching them things, you know, thinking. <laughs> I don't know if it, really, if it really does much good, but it's a hard ball. It's a real hard ball. And it's, and it's, big i mean it's not real little and he just bats that thing all over the house <laughs> that's what you're hearing nobody <laughs> he's so cute though <laughs> he, he is um, a mess. <laughs> so i guess we'll take if, if you guys have any other like last final questions and then um i know leslie was asking did he ever mention anything about you know how they always talked about how they paid with those gift cards which was interesting. It tended to be a very important part of everything. Did he ever talk about that or if NK was giving them to him since he worked in safety? Well, he said he earned them through the job and he just didn't tell Shanann about them because he used them to, uh, you know, to take her out. Now, one thing that doesn't make sense about that, if he had only been seeing her for six weeks or seven weeks or whatever, Shanann had to know that he got gift cards from time to time. So, um, didn't she ever ask him, you know, where's your gift cards that you usually get or whatever. But he said he did earn them and he didn't say who actually handed them to him. I, I wouldn't, I don't know. She would have had. It's, a, it's an interesting point because he does say something. I think it's in the February interview and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, where he says that he earned the gift cards um, for, for doing well at work, um, like through safety, like being and being safe. And then oh. she worked in then then she worked in safety. So we've always just kind of wondered that. Right. Oh, good point. I don't know. That's a very good point. Uh kind of sounds like it, doesn't it? <laughs> but uh I mean he you can tell how much he really thought about those murders leading up to them because you know he got his nerve up that Saturday night to use his own debit card to right. pay their their meal. Knowing sixty dollars, I mean Shanann would know good and well he didn't uh spend $60 on himself at a sports bar. So. Well, speaking of that, how was he going to explain Did He ever tell you, how is he going to explain them just being gone? You know, what was the other part? We all know that Nicole Atkinson, you know, when they got there, it kind of stopped everything, but sorry, my dog is now in the, wants to be in the interview, but um, <laughs> she's like, you haven't paid attention to me. Um <laughs> But she's like, she's like, it's my turn. But did he explain what his plan was um, when they just were gone? Well, he said, you know, uh, when the girls woke up, this is something that is very, very odd. Okay. Um, well, let me back up. Well, no, I'll tell you that first. He had planned on killing them and not moving their bodies. And what's 
interesting is he says to me in a letter, and you'll see this uh, in the book, um, he says that he smothered the girls in their beds. And he tells in the letter how he did that. And then he says that's why the autopsy said the cause of death was smothering. Hmm. Okay, this goes along with what's in the book about what happens that night of, of the murders or morning of the murders once they get to the um, the oil site. So, and remember that that's his, you'll read it. This is in his words. So, um, very interesting to me. That was almost. Um, a slip but -hmm. what is odd too is that he sealed part of his agreement for this deal that he would take and confess guilty was that um the girls records would be sealed that no one would be able to see them and that there is part of an autopsy that we don't know what it says Hmm. um I do know a couple of family members tried to get those records and was not allowed to. There's always been a lot of talk about that. So that'll be interesting to read about. There's been a lot of speculation, a lot of different opinions on that as far as, yeah, as far as autopsy and as far as, I've always had questions on the cause of death just because of the way they word it, especially on one part. and, And that's a whole another thing, rabbit hole, but, I've always actually had kind of questions on if that's even accurate at all, but, Mm -hmm. but that'll be interesting to read about as well. Um, And then we'll just do one or two more and we'll wrap it up. But do you believe that you got the truth from Chris ever? I used to really think I did, but um, the more time that goes on, I've had people say to me, he's going to be one of these guys that has a different story every three months. And Mm -hmm. so now with him, if this is true that he is saying he's going to plead not guilty, he was coerced into pleading guilty. So then we must be going to hear another story. Um, So I don't know. I mean, I guess it's just one of these things that the reader of, you know, has to decide for themselves. Did he do this? Um, I say, yes, I believe him. Um, and I have all along, but I know that there are things that he has hidden from me. Interesting. Yeah, I would, I I think that is how he speaks too. I think that just on my, this is my personal opinion, just that it, he does put the truth out and then things you have to pull out, slip ups. There's all kinds of hints. Sometimes he gives himself away and then the things that he tries to cover up. So that's going to be really interesting. Um, I mean, he told the FBI in February that he took the gas can uh, to the site. And I think it was Tammy Lee said to him, were you going to kill yourself? And at one point he said, yes. And when I Mm -hmm. asked him about that, he said, no, he was never planning on killing himself. And he told me what he had um, planned on doing with that gasoline. His answer to that always was, was, was crazy to me because he said he didn't want to hurt anybody. Yeah. Everybody else around. Right. Right. Just your family, but don't, you know, no, nobody else. Yeah. So yeah. I, I feel like because the coworkers weren't supposed to be there, then that, ha- that plays a role in that. Oh, right. Well, he had to kind of hurry at that point. He, he knew that it was getting to the point, you know, that he had to get moving or they would find him out there. Something else going on or whatever. I guess he was there when or close by when they got there. Okay. Um, and last question, Leslie wants to know if when you met with him and sat down with him, did it affect you mentally? Did it affect your oh mental gosh. I've had counseling over it. I have recently started having just really bad nightmares about it. And he's always in my nightmare. Um, I have nightmares about him taking my granddaughter. I have a four-year-old granddaughter. And I have nightmares so much about being in the store with her or my daughter being out with her and all of a sudden she's gone and then we find out later that he took her uh yeah i've had a lot of problems in fact to the point 
that had I known then what I know now, I would not have went to see him. Really? No, I would not. And I don't advise anybody to do that. I think it's so messed up that it will mess you up. <laughs> it's just really hard not to. Yeah, I can't imagine because just uh, being involved in the case and reading about it, I think messes you up. And so to sit there with them, I, I, yeah, I really can't imagine what that must have been like. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, you know, I, I, some people have, you know, asked, why did I set up a Facebook page to discuss it? It's just, you guys are so um, well versed on this stuff. You guys know, like more than the FBI know, I think, <laughs> the way that you put <laughs> things together. And I want to be able to discuss this with uh, people because uh, I just can't get over it. In fact, I had um, a guy, a producer for, um, I was asked originally to do the narrating for the movie that came out in January where they had the, some woman playing Shanann and another, and the guy playing Christopher, it was very bad. I thought the life movie. Yeah. I was asked to do the narrate for that and I turned it down. And, um, so, uh, he had said to me, how could you, how could you do this and, and, and get through it and be normal again? Didn't it affect you? And I, he said, this is crazy how these people out there in some of these media groups know everything there is to know about this stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I said, yeah, it's one of those cases that's been discussed, but I didn't realize how much until I really so started you know, so a little much. bit and seeing that, yeah, you, these people know so much and the difference even from last year to now is really is incredible Very there's true. so much so it makes you wonder where are we going to be next year with this you know hopefully in the different cases that's like, all i can say. Uh, hope that we have got this all figured out i, I want to wrap up anything to do with watts and never look back i honestly Amen. do i just <laughs> I, yeah, there's I so agree. many other cases that, that I think deserve, you know, the attention. And at this oh. point, I just don't know if I, I don't know if he can tell the truth. I don't know if he wants to tell the truth. I don't even know if he knows what the truth is anymore. I don't I, like, I, so he I need to come he up. Thinks, I, he thinks of himself as a celebrity. He's a self made celebrity. And so he and unfortunately this. he is. Unfortunately he is. Yes. Yes, but I don't think uh, one of the celebrities that people love. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I, no, there are but people some love them, me. But... No. Well, I'm definitely so we will see when the release date is, and I'm really, really hoping that we can get you back on after we read the book because Absolutely. I know that we'll be then we can talk about all the little juicy stuff yes. that's in there. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. And in the meantime, you know, can I tell them about the face? book group i just started yeah absolutely oh, yeah. yeah it's just called uh the christopher watts murders that is the name of the new book and it does have the cover of the new book a picture of it um i um encourage you to enlarge that picture and look really close i think that uh the way that the publisher designed that cover is really neat it's got the uh it's not Bella and CC and Shanann, but if when you uh, expand it, it looks like you know two little girls, and then it's got the oil batteries in it. And then you look at further, and you see his shoulder. It's kind of neat the way they did it. It almost looks three D. But um, anyway, I would love mm -hmm. for any of you to join that, uh, and you know, invite your friends and just help me discuss this with me. Um, I enjoy that. I'm going to try to be on lying every night from 10 until midnight central time trying to answer questions and it's hard sometimes because they're kind of come at you um quickly sure you girls are they're know, going to yeah. come at you quickly yeah, yeah they are and then yes and, and it's going to take a minute to d decide which ones are there to right. just discuss it and, and it I has do. to be difficult <laughs> this, i mean so. you have you have all this information and you have all this you know now background with chris watts but you're is your family into true crime? I mean, like, do you, cause I mean, for me personally, my family's not into true crime. So it's like, this my is husband. like my home away from home. 
my husband enjoys it. Um, my kids, absolutely not. They don't like it at all. It's like, Mom, what are you doing? They were a little upset with me when I started the book. Um, they did not. Oh, they couldn't stand him. They said, you know, look what he did to his family. I wouldn't write a book about him. I wouldn't even use his name. It just gives him more and more attention. They've gotten a little more used to that now. Um, but no, my family doesn't care for true crime. My husband and I do. We like we like to watch ID and and mm -hmm. some of those things, you know, uh, the different cases. But I've got two other books going right now. One that uh, I think you probably have seen the Netflix Don't F the Cats. I think it's what it's yes. called. Yes, Don't F with Cats. Yes. I love that um, one. That's Luca Mangata. And he wrote me um, a few months ago and asked me if I would please write. He liked the book that uh, I wrote and he would like for me to write a book about him. And he wanted me to tell his true story, which he says he's never told the complete truth about what he did. I haven't decided oh, yet about that. I, I'm still on the fence with him because he's very evil. I don't know if mm. I want to subject my mind to it. That's another one that's, yeah. Yeah, but I, I am writing one about a guy that's on death row since last June, last year. His five little children. It's a very sad story. And I'm writing that book. And then I'm writing a book about a, a lady here in Chicago that um, killed her um, five-year-old son last year. She beat him to death. She was on drugs uh, at the time. Got a, a huge story behind it, her life and what she went through um, growing up. And then you see, you know, her being able to commit this murder. It's just one of the saddest stories I've ever heard. And her and I um, have, were in close contact with each other. And although I think what she did is um, heinous and hideous, um, my heart goes out to her because she has struggled since a little girl. And she's a product of, of what she was raised to be. So anyway, that's the two books. And I, I'm really anxious to get going further on those because there's more to life than Christopher Watts. <laughs> Absolutely. <I love> feeling. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, it's like time to move on. <laughs> I know. But, um, after my book, it's time to move on after my book. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, for me, it's time to move on after I feel like I've, I've got enough of the answers because and there, there'll never be a hundred percent. So I think yeah. it's just time for me. It's time to move on after I have enough of the answers to the questions that right. I've asked since the beginning. And for many, the ones right. I for have many I'm sure. And, and the people are so smart out there. Um, the true crime people are so smart that they've got so many things pegged. I don't think there's much that got past them. So maybe just some details that they, you know, would have no way of knowing except that Christopher said it, you know, so we'll see. Right. We feel that way. Definitely. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you sitting here and answering everyone's questions and coming on and talking to us. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to the book. So, and again, like I said, hopefully you'll come back after. Yeah, I would love to. And I, I really enjoyed it. And thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it and appreciate yeah, your absolutely. people and their questions. And, oh. <laughs> yep. and uh, you can ask them on there. Well, All thank right, you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yep. Thank have a good guys. night. Bye, Bye Sherilyn. And have a great Bye -bye. night, guys. Thank you for joining us tonight. We appreciate it and have a good rest of your weekend. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.